Hey folks, Rob of Two Guys That Are Riding. Today we're out at Burnsville Center and this is Back to the 80s and I am with William and he has an exceedingly cool car that I remember when I was 21. He's only 21. This car well predates him. But I'm gonna let him introduce himself and introduce his car to you and tell you why this car, but also why the other eight just like it. William, take it away, buddy. All right, so this is my 1982 Ford EXP. It's in the 3M blue. You can only get it for the first year, 1982, and it's got a matching blue interior. What drew you, what, what drew you to this car? What is the story behind you and a car that's well, way older than you are? My mom was in high school at the time. She was about 16, and her parents were going to help buy her her first car. And uh, my grandfather, her father, had said, uh, you're only going to get a two-seater, so none of your friends can uh, distract you while you're driving. Because in her town, there was a terrible accident in a station wagon. There were a whole bunch of kids inside. So the driver got distracted, they had crashed, and a few of the kids inside had died. Oh boy. So she went out, got a Blue 82 EXP just like this, four speed, the 1.6 engine. Uh, hers had the sunroof and some cool graphics on the bottom, but otherwise it's the same as mine. Uh, at one point her parents sold it out from under her right before she went to college. And she set out to get another one just like it. She had told my father, my dad had saw one on Craigslist in Minnesota. I live in Wisconsin. Uh, so he went out and got it. It was repainted black. It had a red interior. So it, it was the same car, but it didn't look the part. But then uh, about a couple months later, he heard about a matching pair of 82s in blue, just like this, the four speeds, blue interior, all of that. Uh, but they were down in North Carolina. So he trekked all the way down to North Carolina, drove this one back, and then he trailered the other one back home. Uh, so, so, so your draw to this is a tribute to your mom's car that she lost while in high school. Yes. Okay. So while, while it was in our family's ownership, we drove it everywhere. Every errand we ran, I'd be in the passenger seat. One of my parents would be up front. <laughs> they, they were fun now, but I hardly ever got to see them. But if I knew they were getting in one of these, we'd get to make a trip somewhere. Cars put me to sleep, so I always fell asleep in the car. If they can get me to shut up, <laughs> Throw me in the seat, go out for a five minute drive, I'd be passed out by the time I got back. What's some of the unique things you like particularly about this car? What I love is there's no other car like it. Um, it's not the fastest car in the world. It's not the most popular car in the world, but it's one of a kind. Uh, yeah, anyone could go out and get a normal muscle car, sports car, or whatever, but I'm not a normal person by any means. I feel I deserve a unique car for myself. So uh, underneath, it's a normal Escort. As far as the engine transmission, suspension and brakes go, it's all Escort. It's all interchangeable, which makes getting parts, parts, really easy to get, really affordable. Uh, but it being an EXP, what you get is you get a different front clip, different front bumper, different hood. You get different fenders that have awesome flares on them. You get full wraparound bumpers, built-in turn signals. And then further down the car, you get a chopped, chopped roof line. It's two inches shorter than a normal Escort. So your windshield is also tilted down some more. So you were telling me earlier it's about 43 inches high? Yes. Okay, so this is, you were saying this is your modified GT43. Yes. Okay. In, in stock form. <laughs>
<laughs> so I haven't even went to lower it yet. This is just how it sits. Oh, so this was the original stance on it. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, uh, in 1984-85, when they introduced the turbo model, it sat about an inch lower. Okay. So those do sit lower, but all the other ones are relatively this height, and I do have slightly bigger tires on. Okay, okay. Well, let's take a look around the back. Sure. Now, were the uh, louvers, are those standard? I believe those are dealer options. Okay. All right, so we're taking a look at the uh, brute force behind the... Uh, the almighty horsepower of this vehicle. And uh, tell me, what was the horsepower rated on this car? Ba uh, base engine, the horsepower was rated at 70 horsepower and about 84 foot-pounds of torque. <laughs> well, now, what's, you, what's special about this engine, though? Okay, so it's a Hemi, folks. This is a 1.6 CVH. That stands for Compound Valve Hemispherical Engine. So the, the combustion chamber is a hemispherical cha shape, thus the name Hemi. Uh, so how they do that is it's a single overhead cam, and they have two valves per cylinder. They go in at about a 45-degree angle per cylinder. And then they have the spark plugs coming in from the side to go right between the two valves for a really nice even burn. And all this adds up to a really good fuel economy. These were supposed to get roughly 29 uh, for daily driving, 44 right. on the highway. Which for back early, I mean, 80, 81, that's huge. Yeah, that was the goal. I mean, you were up in, I know the Toyota Corollas and stuff like that, they were really having uh, uh, mileage wars and stuff like yes. that. So for the domestics to be able to match something like that, that was incredible. Yeah, and that was, that was something big for the American market. Because they have the same engine over in Europe. Uh, this engine is designed and engineered by Europeans. Okay. So these are filled inside of European escorts and Capris and other similar cars. But for the Americans, they thought, oh, if the Americans going to buy a four banger, they're doing it because they want fuel efficiency. So all these have less power than their European counterpart counterparts and have much better fuel economy. So you were telling me though that the uh, tribute to your mom and the bug not Volkswagen, but the bug that you have for this car didn't stop with just this car. No. You have another one? Yes, and this one isn't even my first car. Okay. How many? You, so you have one more of these? I have two more in the matching blue, okay. almost identical to this car. Okay. Then I have uh, another 82 in black that was originally silver over black. Okay. Kind of like opposite of Richard, uh, uh, Richard Petty. Okay. Blue. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and then I have a purple one that's been converted to electric. Okay. Oh. I have a black. Did you do the conversion? No. Okay. All there right. was a high school or a college that had converted it for competition. Okay. They'd convert a car and then uh, race around a track so you could drive the furthest yeah. against right. other schools. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I don't know how well it did, but it right. did. But that's cool that you got it. Not yeah. only that it's an EXP, but it's electric. It's already been converted. Yes. Uh, so in total, you have how many of these? I have nine in total. <laughs> All first gens with the same front end. <laughs> All stick shifts. And, and what is it you hope to do with these? I hope to restore as many as I can. Okay. But now, I, you were telling me though you've developed uh, other than just um, owning and restoring these and having the fun of driving them though, you, you've kind of ventured off into kind of a, a new business idea. Yes. Something that you'd like to promote as well. Yeah, so I, I've started, slowly starting, uh, to work out a uh, production for various parts that you cannot replace. Because uh, most parts are interchangeable with other Ford Escorts, either here in America or across the pond. Uh, some of it's generic Ford parts, like some of the interior parts, but most of it's EXP specific. This clip is only on EXP, most of the body panels only on EXPs. Uh, some of the interior is only for EXPs. So I'd like to replicate a lot of those for people who need them. Do you have any idea what the production numbers were for these cars at that time? Production numbers uh, consist... When they retired these, they had produced a little over a quarter million. Wow. Wow. In the first year alone, they sold about 90,000. Just of the EXP. Wow. I that did does, not realize that. That doesn't include the Mercury LN7. Okay. Mercury's counterpart. Right, right. 
Uh, well, I guess I, I, you know, I've seen them, but I didn't know they were that prevalent. I thought they were, um, I thought they were kind of rare. They are now. They, they most definitely are now. <laughs> I, I was never around. I, I'm only 21, so uh, I was told that they flooded the streets of Wisconsin and the whole rest of the country, but I had only ever seen the three in my family, and then I got the the other six. Well, it is kind of cool because, you know, for the early 80s, it was a sporty looking car that basically Ford took a standard Econo box with the, um, with the Escort and they made it cool. It, it was. I mean, you may look at it now, folks, and think, oh, that's a little quirky, but I remember this when I was 21 years old, and that's what's cool, and that's what drew me over here to talk to William and to find out his story. So, you know what? I, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for your story. Thanks for letting us uh, share the story with everyone else as well, and uh, good luck on restoring those yeah. other ones. Can't <laughs> wait to see them at more car shows. Yeah. Awesome.